Hey, Bubba Tech here, also known as Oki Tools, and this is going to be the first video in a series of videos I'm doing about the current setup of my ARs. I'm doing these videos, this series of videos, because I'm getting ready to start my first AR build, and um, in that video, I'm probably going to refer to that project as the CP2 or a carving project too and in other videos in the past over the past few years I've referred to as uh, RP1 and CP1 and I just figured I you know should show uh, what I'm using those acronyms for in you know my personal collection and uh, kind of explain that before I actually start showing videos on that particular build. So that's the reason why I'm doing this video today. This is my RP1. I personally refer to it as that inside of my collection of ARs and it stands for Rifle Project 1. And as you can see it's kind of set up like a DMR gun uh, with the scope and everything and a 20 inch barrel and uh, bipod and whatnot. So uh, that's why I'm doing this video. Just thought it might be interesting uh, the current setup and some ideas I have on it. Maybe you guys can give me some ideas on where I should go with it. You know, something along those lines. So let's dive right in. So first things first, I'll talk about what this rifle actually is and what it was before I actually started my project and where I picked it up at and everything. So what this gun actually is, is a Frankenstein rifle that somebody else put together and then sold for consignment at a local gun store that I purchased it from. Uh, I can't remember, six or, I think it was six years ago, maybe, maybe a little bit more than that. So anyways, what it actually is, or was when that person built it, was a, a DPMS lower that my understanding was brand new, and um, I'm not 100% certain what kind of, um, uh, you know, lower parts kit it has LPK, but I believe it was probably a DPMS sourced one as well. Uh, some of the components kind of look like what some of their stuff, you know, comes out as. And then, uh, you know, just mil spec things and a mil spec stock and everything, which my understanding was it was also new when I purchased it. The upper was the interesting thing, the really interesting thing, and I will show that to you now. So I don't know how well you all can read that barrel stamp right there, but I'll read it for you. Uh, apologies, my camera's not the best. 35679MP556 NATO17. So what that stands for, as you well know, is MP stands for mag particle tested, 556 NATO stands for the caliber, and 1 in 7 is the twist rate of the rifling. But those first five numbers, 35679, are important numbers in that... Uh, that barrel stamp right there that is a cage number for who manufactured this particular barrel this particular barrel according to that cage number was manufactured by FN Herstel so when I first saw this rifle in the store uh, in the uh, like new being you know being sold for like new um, I did not know about their cage number or what that stood for or anything and neither did the dealer offhand so I purchased it because it was a great price and I was looking for a 20 inch um, setup like this that was kind of like a, you know with a flat top that was like an M16A4 uh, type setup so that's what I was kind of trying to go for back then so uh, this is what I was looking for great price so I went ahead and got it lo and behold I looked up that number at the beginning of the prefix for the um, barrel stamp and find out it's a cage number for Fabrique National uh, Herstel and I you know that's great that's a very high-end barrel on a and it and this particular case is not just the barrel the uh, receiver was manufactured by them too so uh, I actually talked to the dealer again about it and was asking him a little bit about the rifle and let him know that it was a you know an FN barrel and upper and everything and uh, he was telling me that his understanding was the upper came from a uh, trade-in from a police department or something along those lines in Texas and that the lower of course was a DPMS lower that was new in a stock and an LPK and everything and uh, the guy that was selling on consignment had actually put them together and they were selling it for like new like I said and they didn't realize that it was a 
uh, an FN Herstal uh, upper. They just thought it was another 20 inch, you know, flat top upper. So, you know, big score for me. And uh, they were uh, kind of thought that was cool about the cage number and everything when I told them. So, you know, it was a, it was a good deal. Uh, didn't pay a whole lot for it in comparison to what it probably could have sold for. These particular barrels with these cage numbers aren't as far as I know, government contracts, that has a different prefix in front of it uh, for like a military contract, but they are for like law enforcement contracts and things like that. And then nowadays you can actually uh, buy them from their dealers and stuff like that. But they were, uh, you know, six, seven years ago, they seemed to be a little bit more um, rare than they are now. Uh, I don't know what that's all about, but that was just my understanding. So next I want to talk about the project and how it started. I decided that um, I liked the whole uh, A4 setup and everything with the front sight block and standard carry handle on the back and everything, but I kind of wanted to turn this into a scoped rifle. And um, I decided that I didn't want it to be uh, set up high like on top of the charging handle or anything like that, or have some high mount setting or something like that. I decided that I wanted it to be uh, on the top of the receiver like it should be and I didn't want any obstructions ahead. So all that kind of boiled down to um, uh, a monolithic uh, rail system uh, sands the front sight. So, and I, I wanted to go free float as well to help increase the accuracy and whatnot and just, you know, longevity of the weapon. And um, give me more rail space as well. As you can see, the front ring is right there on the actual uh, part of the rail rather than on top of the receiver because that's where I personally like mine. I like it to, to uh, be stopped right here at the back of the receiver and go forward. That's where my best uh, sight picture is uh, for me. So um, I looked around for different rails out there, and I was looking to get a good deal, and I... Uh, actually went to uh, Amazon and there was apparently a place that had them on discount for the holiday or closeout or something and I bought this rail right here which is a um, 15 inch monolithic uh, the top rail is and then it has these vent holes right here uh, monolithic uh, black in color they have them in different colors Viking Tactics rail which is actually a Troy Alpha rail um, that the Troy Alpha Rail, as you know, has little holes all the way down, little vent holes. The Viking Tactics has just these larger vent holes. And it came with uh, three rail sections, which I have all three of them on the front there. I'll show you that in a minute. And uh, those are really cool because they have um, built into some of them, they have uh, QD, Q, quick disconnect sling swivels. And so this is basically exactly what I was looking for and at a price of about $150, I couldn't beat it. So um, this was a whole process to um, get this to happen, really. First off, I had to cut off the delta ring at the back, take off the old handguard, cut off the delta ring at the back, just used a, a Dremel for that. And then here in the front, I'll show you, I actually decided instead of going with a low profile gas block, I decided to actually go the hillbilly route because uh, I'd seen some guys on YouTube did it and they came out real well and go ahead and cut down the front sight block and cut the bayonet lug off and then just blend all that back in and round it to where it fits in there perfectly and you essentially make oh you gotta cut the swing swivel off too you essentially make a low profile gas block that can still use the existing gas block with uh, you know and it's pinned and that was the thing I kinda really liked about it I'm not real big on set screws it's fine, especially if it's dimpled and done right, but I really liked that I got to keep the pinned front sight, and I just modded it. And the fact that it was free, and that I didn't have to get a sight block to make that happen, and I got to use my existing gas tube and everything, was pretty cool. So I just did that in my garage. It came out great. I'll show you a picture of it. You blew it afterwards so it doesn't have any issues with rust, and it blends right in. And, uh, you know, it's going to be underneath the handguard, so it's not really that big a deal anyways, underneath the rail. And it came out great. Sorry to be pointing the barrel at you like that, but guess what? It's not, you're not actually here, and it is unloaded, so no big deal. 
But that gives you an idea right there. As you can see, the front sight block has just been cut down and blended in to look like a uh, low profile pump, uh, front, uh, gas block, sorry. And uh, it fits in there just nice, completely clears it. There's the bottom side. I don't know how well you can see it, where the sling swivel would have been and the bayonet lug. So it came out great. I uh, was really pleased with the work and how it came out. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're looking to do that, there are plenty of videos on YouTube about it. And I do recommend it because you do get the benefit of keeping the uh, pinned uh, front sight block and, you know, also saving the money. Okay, so let me talk real quick, hopefully, about these uh, real sections at the front here. So I used all three of them. You can put them in any position, but I preferred them out here. And uh, as you can see, this one right here has the uh, quick disconnect uh, for the sling swivel, uh, as you can see there. I do not know who makes this sling swivel or who I bought it from, um, but it's been great and it's worked real well. I really do like it. Uh, I'll talk about the sling real quick. This is one that I put together myself. Uh, it is a two-point sling. I just prefer two-point slings. And uh, I looked around for a while at different slings out there, different two-point slings, and I kind of just got aggravated with the idea of spending quite a bit of money uh, and being able to, you know, for something I could have just built myself. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of really good two-point slings out there that are probably worth the money and do a lot more than my sling, which is just basically a piece of, um, you know, uh, webbing that... Um, can't remember exactly how big that is or how I did it. I uh, think it might be like an inch, and these are uh, inch keepers, and that's all it is. It's just the two, the two, um, the two keepers on either end, and then you know for adjustment, and then you know the one inch, uh, you know, nylon webbing here. And you, I got them in different colors. I got a, uh, a OD green on my uh, carbine, and I got this one which is coyote, I believe, and you can get them in different colors. But I spent next to nothing, I think I spent more in shipping to get them sent to me uh, from where I bought them from. And you can go into Army Surplus stores and buy them that way too. But, uh, you know, it is, you know, I've used them quite a bit now since I've been doing them for the past several years. And uh, have made a couple others, just real simple, put them together uh, for my other guns out there. Like my shotgun and stuff like that. And they're just real simple and they work. And that is the most important thing, and I spent next to nothing on them. And uh, they're easy to come by. So that was the sling. The other two rail sections are small ones, like this one right here. Then there's another one on the other side that is the same size, I believe. And um, they're just held in with the backer and a screw that screws down into it. This one, as you can see, is for my uh, Harris bipod. And um, I do like this bipod. I bought it for another gun, like... 11 years ago and it worked real well on that gun and then I sold that gun but kept the bipod and uh, you know it has a sling swivel down here you can actually hook on to if, if I didn't want to do it right here and uh, you know just uses a you know you just put a standard sling swivel in there but I prefer it over here with the quick disconnect uh, which is you know a lot easier for cleaning and stuff like that if you just want to get it out of the way and um, I do like this but it, it is heavy and it adds weight to it not a big deal on a bench gun or a gun that you're going to be sitting, you know, prone on the ground with. But um, I may be looking into other options in the future. Uh, I do like the Harris bipods, but I may be looking into other options in the future for that. The other side is blank, doesn't have anything on it. It's the same size as this one. And I have it on the other side in case I want to put a flashlight on there using a, uh, you know, attachment ring or something like that. Um, but I usually don't have one on here just because it's easier to uh, store it that way in the case and um, because I usually just shoot it off the bench and stuff like that for some long range stuff. So those are the rail sections and uh, a complete overview of the rail. I really do like it. Um, when I got it and put it on there and uh, you know the work I did to make it work with the existing gun, it came out great and I really do like it. It's got the... Uh, notches back here to center it and it is perfectly aligned with it and you know these uh, right here for holding on to the existing barrel nut it didn't come with a propitory barrel nut which is nice you can just use a standard mil spec one uh, those have never come loose in the years that I've had it now and the 
I don't know, hundreds of rounds, maybe more, that I put through it. Uh, they've never come loose. Now, if you're doing like high round counts, like super high round counts, you probably do need to uh, make sure to retighten them every now and again. But I did blue Loctite these, and they have not had a you know single bit of problem uh, since I installed them. Or up here in the front with the rail sections, same thing. While we're out here, I'll just talk about the flash hider real quick. It is an A2 flash hider that came with the gun. I uh, prefer those kind of flash hiders. It looks good with this A2 profile barrel. Um, if I ever change it out, it'll probably be for a suppressor or something like that. Um, there are some other flash hiders out there and compensators like from Spikes Tactical and Midwest Industries that I've looked at before that I liked, but I would only be trading them out you know, flash hider for flash hider because of the way they looked and the way I liked the way they looked, not because I was trying to gain anything by doing it. That one works perfectly fine for me. Right now, all my guns have that on there, and, you know, they're affordable and they work. I do like them. Let's talk about that dropped-in scope from Burris. Okay, let's not talk about that dropped-in scope from Burris. I actually have a video reviewing this and unboxing it and everything when I took it out. Um, and uh, I'll probably do an update video on it specifically uh, in the future. Um, uh, so I really don't want to get too much into it. Uh, if you want to know about it, like uh, it's capped uh, adjustable rings and everything, and what powers it is, it's 3 to 9 if you want to know by 40. Um, and that kind of setup, then you can go ahead and watch my video or wait for my uh, video that's going to come out on um, how it's held up over the past almost three years that I've had it. It was one of my first videos I did reviewing it. Uh, I'm going to say this. When they say that it is shock resistant, they are not lying. This sucker was in a horrible, horrible wreck that me and my family were in a, a few years ago, a couple years ago. And it just took, and this whole gun did, my... Uh, Actually, my Harris bipod actually is broken one spot because of it, uh, even though this was in a soft case. Um, just took a, a beating, and I honestly thought it was broke. And uh, just knew this was going to be completely, uh, you know, knocked out of alignment and zero. And I was pleasantly surprised that I think it was off by, like, two clicks in one direction. And I think it was um, in elevation. Windage was almost spot on. I was just very surprised. I mean that this this took a you know hit it like that and and you know was just fine when I retested it. So um, I'll go over more of that in that video in the future. But you know check that video out. It's it's a great scope. It really is. Love the reticle and um, am really looking forward. Haven't really got a chance in the past few years to get out there and do some really long range shooting, you know, like 500, 600 yards, maybe even further uh, with it. But, you know, the 100, 200, 300 yard stuff that I've been shooting with it, it it's done superb. And when I do an update video, I'll have targets and stuff to show you on that. Uh, in case I left it out, there are the hash marks uh, for the uh, monolithic rail on the top there, that Viking Tactics rail. And the top of this receiver uh, from FN also has hash marks that match in with it, so that's really nice. So real quick before I start talking about my future upgrades or things that are remain to be seen in this Project Rifle, these are uh, Leopold um, high set uh, scope rings, if you're wondering, uh, when I was talking about the uh, Burris scope there. So... Future upgrades, as you can see right now, pretty much all it is is the optic and the rail. That's the only upgrades I've really done to it. Uh, they were big, up, big upgrades, expensive upgrades, uh, over $300 altogether to make them happen. These are a really good uh, affordable scope, by the way, that's set up really well. And if you can still find these rails uh, in, in a good price point, they you know are you know great price point and they really work for you. They're not the new fan dangled uh, key mod stuff or uh, you know M lock uh, that I'm actually probably going to be doing with my next carbine uh, but you know they work back in you know they're great I like them and I like that you don't have like rails all the way down that add extra weight they're actually fairly light for what they are and that's a 15 inch or two so future upgrades as you can 
uh, tell um, from the sling, I had an idea for coloration for it. I wanted to go with a flat dark earth look for it. Technically, I wanted to go with a coyote look for it or sand look, but I'll probably just settle for flat dark earth. It's going to have a uh, flat darker, sorry about that, flat dark earth uh, pistol grip and a trigger guard at some point in time in the future. Probably not too far off. And um, the that'll kind of get close to completing the look I'm going for. Uh, I could paint it, I really don't know. I already talked about the uh, Harris bipod up there uh, that I may be replacing. Other things that I'd like to replace would be, I want to replace the old charging handle uh, with the same one that I have on my uh, uh, CP Carbine Project 1. And it is a uh, BCM uh, medium latch uh, gunfighter charging handle. I'd like to get one of those. Uh, that would probably be uh, probably the first thing I'd like to do before I do any of the other stuff because I really do like those uh, charging handles. But those are just some of the other ideas. I may do um, scope covers on here. I actually have a set of scope covers that I've never actually tried on there for some reason that I just now thought about. Uh, but they might not fit. I don't know. Uh, I kind of like it. That streamlined look. I always keep it inside of a gun stock, gun sock inside of a soft case um, that I have for it. So I'm not really worried about that per se. But it may be good for like... Uh, field stuff if I was to use it for a competition or training or something like that that I had covers you know another thing I've thought about is a slightly higher setup uh, for the uh, rings and going with a uh, front backup site and a rear backup site um, as it is now like I said I kind of just shoot it off the bench and this works just fine I don't really need backup sites but possibly in the future those would be things I would be thinking about also in the future, this is the other side of the gun as well, also in the future things like uh, an ambidextrous safety would be kind of neat uh, to put on there. And uh, maybe uh, doing an upgraded trigger. Um, I, I mean they're just, uh, to me they're really expensive. You get a lot out of them but they're really expensive. It may be a, a future type thing that I do. I would like one of those self-contained triggers that just drops in or replaces the mil spec one that's in there. Uh, especially on like a, a long range sort of DMR bench gun like this sort of setup, I think that'd be really nice uh, to uh, swap out for the trigger. So this was my video showing my uh, DMR setup for my Romeo Papa 1, Rifle Project 1, Frankenstein gun, DPMS lower, FN Hertzstall upper and barrel with a Viking Tactics Rail by uh, Troy and a Burris dropped-in scope. Hope you enjoyed it. If you got some other ideas uh, sort of going in line with those future upgrades I was talking about, go ahead and let me know in the comments and stay tuned for other videos in this series regarding my um, Charlie Papa 1 Carbine Project 1 video. Uh, as well as my future uh, Charlie Papa 2 uh, Carbine Project 2 video, as well as a update video for the Burris scope after I get some more uh, shooting data for you. Thanks for watching.